Knicks go down in the QC looking to redeem themselves after an embarrassing performance against the Bucks. And it looked good early, man. You wanted Kemba to step his game up, and he did that in a major way. 17 first quarter points. And then once again, the third quarter of Doom gets us again. You had sloppy play. You had everybody was getting cooked. RJ was getting cooked. Kemba getting cooked. Julius forcing the ball. Nobody passing the ball. And once again, it was the bench to bring us back into this thing. IQ, electric. OB, electric. Derrick Rose did his thing. My guy Alec Burks, of course. But then Tibbs brings back some starters with four minutes left. He goes back to Julius. He goes back to RJ and goes back to Kemba with four minutes left. And the Knicks get outscored 13-3. They get ran out of the gym. Knicks lose 104-96, man. You know, I usually am really good at finding the optimism, even in the loss. And even I don't have the, the words to explain what transpired in this game, especially in the last two minutes of the game. My blame is going to Tibbs. Here's why. You know, the, co the players do what the coach tells them to do. It's up to the coach to go ahead and be the leader of the ship, to be, you know, the one steering the boat in the right direction. Why Tibbs took out Obi who had the hot hand in that moment to put in Julius Randle, who was having an atrocious game, did atrocious. not even score a bucket until almost the end of the second quarter. Why you take out somebody who is playing exceptionally well, why you mess with that second unit is so egregious and so asinine that it's infuriating. I don't understand the logic. I, you can't, there's not anybody who can explain to me the logic because it does not make sense. Let me, let me give you a stat. This is an atrocious stat, but it's a real one. Let's go. All of our starters are negative 78 in their minutes tonight. That is the Terrible. worst defensive rating in the history of the NBA. Not just this game, not just this season, the worst defensive rating in the history of the NBA. Terrible. Each and every one of these players have have had a great game at some point this season. Fournier, the first game. RJ went through that stretch. Uh, Kemba a little bit the first game. Kemba tonight. And they haven't been able to put it all together in one game. And, and that's been the issue. When you look at the team on paper and you look at their potential, you see how potent they can be offensively. But it doesn't mean anything if you're not able to put that performance together in a game and and following up with the, the leader and captain with Julius Randle. Uh, four for 15 tonight, not cutting it. Defensively, not cutting it. RJ's my favorite player on the Knicks, personally. But sometimes you, have, you even have to show your favorite player some tough love. And, and right now, RJ is struggling. Evan Fournier is, is another player. You paid a lot of money to. He's a starter. And right now, since the first game against the Celtics, since that game, he's been averaging 11 points, shooting 39% from the field and shooting 34% from three. Before you yeah, go, go ahead, in, go I mean, for people who are confused about the stat, so it, that's not negative 78 in just today's game. The starting five of Kemba, Fournier, Barrett, Ramsell, and Robinson, they've played the most minutes thus far this season. And they are negative 78 in the minutes that they have played so yeah. far this season as a collective unit. So that is the worst by any five-man lineup in the history of the NBA, just for people who were confused by the stat line. Tibbs looked at this second unit that he went all the way in with against the Milwaukee Bucks. They got gas in the end. They deserved to, to finish. I thought it was a good way to send a message to the starters but there was no doubt that that second unit got gassed in the end. I think, I can't speak for him, but I think when you're asking that second unit to play from just about the two-minute mark into the third quarter to end the game, I, I don't think that's realistic because they, they, they had spent so much energy trying to get us back into this thing, which they did so well. Now, Obi, I, I, I would leave Obi in because Julius has just been a disaster for us. I would have left Obi in. 
But I felt like Tibbs, it, it was a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Han said it best on the post game show. I felt like he was caught in between. What I did want him to do was go to the bench earlier in the third when they when the starters were getting flamed. I mean, you talked about R.J. Barrett, J.D. They, he started the third quarter losing Gordon Hayward on a cut. Got scored on. Next play, Gordon Hayward for three. Kemba gets cooked in the, in the pick and roll. Two back-to-back possessions for a three-pointer. Julie's forcing shots all over the place. He's got guys wide open. He's doing double pump fadeaways in, in the lane. It just it made no sense, bro. The passes were sloppy. Turnovers here, there, and everywhere. You have the worst defensive team in the league. Probably fifth worst in terms of sending opponents to the free throw line. And between your three starters, Julius, RJ, and Fournier, you, you mount four free throw attempts all by Julius. How long do we reward inconsistency you know what i'm saying like if and failure overall like bringing julius back in after obi was getting hot was straight dumb dumb i don't think that was necessary i get it uh people saying yes again with julius being the the main guy and everything he's not to me i really don't see that because if you missing free throws like that oh yeah you know i, I mean? forgot about that too man in the end he missed you know like three saying? straight free throws man that was he missed three of them three yeah like and even then he did that in the other game i forgot which game it was but he made like a facial expression when he missed two free throws like yeah. he's not the guy he's not the closer d rose is the closer rose hive stand up yes yeah. d rose yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand that. You know what I mean? Big up to quickly. Big up Burks, your guy Burks for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's I'm not understanding what, what Tibbs is doing. This this is a next man up type of squad. So it should be a battle for the minutes in a positive, friendly competition way. Yeah. You know, Obi's been proving himself. Give him more minutes. What's wrong with that? You know what I'm saying? Some people not performing, cut their minutes. They should know that. Is this this is what it is. Everybody just want to downgrade the New York Knicks and Knicks. You no, know, you know, stop downgrading us while we're going to you spoil you from last year. And you didn't even know we were getting ready to do that. So now this year you're looking for so much, you still overlooking the point that they still got to go and be together. Patience a little bit more. That's what we need, some patience. Everybody saying about dude, in three weeks from now, people be saying, I wish he'd have been playing like that two weeks ago, talking about what's happening right now. Be patient and let the team grow, you know what I'm saying? Atlanta was the same way last year. It got hot at the end. So I'd rather, you know what I'm saying, go through my struggles right now and get to the, get to where I need to go and get strong at the end of the season. Let us grow. Be patient, man. Don't give up on your team. Don't throw us under the bus. Don't want to trade players. Don't, don't, don't. Don't crucify the team, man. Just be patient and let everybody grow, man. I don't want to talk too much about basketball. I ain't seen no basketball really in a whole week. I've been in the mountains. I ain't even been able to write lines. I can't even use my phone. But now I'm back. So now this is what it is. Indiana Pacers, here we come.